Hello, welcome to Layback with Betfair podcast. I'm Tom Haylock from Betfair. We've got Richie Irvine, Matt Taylor, and the man of the moment, the great man, part-time influencer, <laughs> part-time comedian, um, sometimes horse trainer, Mitch Beer. Welcome. How are you, mate? Mate, I'm terrific. Great to be here. Uh, and uh, up on the Gold Coast in what could only be described as a mansion. The Betfair mansion. The Betfair mansion. Up on the Gold Coast. Yeah, and uh, we're a long way from Albury, but I feel well at home. How are you feeling this far away from Albury? Are you actually feeling at home? You know, I, I love getting away for a couple of days. I, I lived in Melbourne my whole life, and I thought Albury was going to be cactus when I moved there, uh, living in a country town. But two or three days away from it um, is enough for me. <laughs> I actually look forward to going back. You guys got up here this morning. You, we did. You, we did, yeah. A couple City of days. Seconds, yeah. Yep, yep, two days. Um, yeah, it'd be good doing some stuff with you guys, which is always fun. Yes. Big day on the punt tomorrow. We've had a very relaxing day today at the uh, Broad Beach Tavern. Nice. Mm. Absolutely heaving with Magic Millions yep. kind of people. Yep, well, as and, it is, um, it's time of year. Nice, nice way to finish off the day, good chat with Mitch. Chinese has been ordered, it's on the way, so that's... This is gonna be interesting if it turns up mid-podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be straight straight we'll get a rating, yeah. surely. There's no Uber Eats in Albury, so... <laughs> is there not? The, no, then there's no Uber Eats. It's a business, no business idea. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, straight off the bat, this is exciting for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I think? It's got to be bad to be bad. Do you, know, <laughs> do you know what I think? Maybe after you've trained like the last winner at Albury, you can maybe jump in your car and do some sort of Uber, drive some food around. Or Part-time something. Uber driver yeah. as well. It's, it's, it's when I don't train the last winner at Albury, I think about driving. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably <laughs> more likely. Last three days of the month when I've got wages and food yeah. and ringing ears. Think about it. Think about it. Do, do, do you need Uber Eats? Mm. Is there Ubers? Surely there's Ubers. There was a couple that kicked off. It didn't really take off. No, no <laughs> it didn't, didn't take, take off. So just it's just mind blowing. So there's, there's literally no Ubers. No, there's, <laughs> there's a couple hit and miss, but it's mainly just cab. And when I first moved to Albury, you know, had quite a few young staff. I'm like, there's no Uber. It's hard to get a cab. And I'm like, how does everyone get around? And they're like, oh, you just just put your Facebook status as cash for lifts. And then people will comment and then they'll come pick you up for money. I'm like, that's all well and good. I don't know anyone that yeah. lives here. They're like, oh, I never really thought about that. So there's a lot of hour yeah. walk time. Like the Ivan, first month. It's like Ivan Milat likes this. <laughs> Ivan Milat's on his way. Great. Someone from Europe we just picked up. Anyway. We've got plenty coming up on the, the podcast. We'll talk about your life in racing, how you got into it. We've we'll talked about the great game itself. We'll talk to you guys about... The wagering space, mm. we've got some questions from Twitter, we've got all sorts of stuff. It's all happening. Food ratings, lots yep. coming up. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, how did you get into it? Let's talk. You, you golfer? Yeah, well, Dad was a jockey and, and, uh, and he trained for a bit. So Dead Set grew up, had no other option but to, to like racing. And I did really like the racing side of things, but had no idea about a horse, never really touched him had nothing to, to do with that side of stuff. Left school to play golf, um, which seemed great in theory and uh, was going so really well. When you well. say left school to play golf, you mean try and go pro? So yeah, they let me leave school when I was 16. So um, going pro. I yeah. think Nidri secondary, Nidri secondary College was happy to see the arse end of me when I, <laughs> uh, I wasn't really going much anyway. I was just playing golf flat, at, flat out. So they, they let me leave and I was playing off I think six when I was 16 and they said, you've got to get down to four in 12 months mm. or we'll cut you off. So uh, lo and behold, I lobbed up at the, I got assigned to this putrid nine hole golf course in like Altona, Maidstone. Um, and there was this awesome bloke that was the, the club pro there mm -hmm. and he just loved punting and drinking and um, I used to get in there and open up the pro shop and then he'd roll in and dad was still riding at the time and he'd just be like, oh, text your old man, like, what, what can win today and this and that. So, you know, we'll just, it was a very low key community sort of golf club and we'd just be in there punting and it really ignited my passion for, for racing. Um, so much so that I probably hit close to 17 and started going to a house parties and things and golf didn't really become no. a, a massive priority and um lo and behold went home one day and said to dad you know oh, i don't want to play golf can you get me a job at the stables and he just froze like yeah. it was just like oh no i thought we we're gonna skip a generation finally of people in racing and it was funny he said all right if you if you if you're gonna go down this i'm gonna get you the best job that mm -hmm. you can and he teamed up with a job with lloyd williams 
Yeah, and right. at the time, he had like 80 in work at Flemington. Mm -hmm. And um, I went down there and, and I rocked up the first morning at, you know, 4 a.m. And they're like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And where's your gear? I'm like, oh, I didn't bring any gear. Like, it was in tracksuit <laughs> pants. And, uh, golf yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, we thought you'd ride work. I'm like, oh, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I can't ride. So and they're like, never, oh. You, you never ride. You never, never ride a horse. Terrible. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I remember I got dad to, to try and teach me how to ride, ride. And I was trotting around the, the, the sand roll on one. And I thought, oh, I'm going really good, you know, just slapping away. And uh, he goes, stop, stop. And I stopped. And he goes, jump off. So I got off. And he looked me straight in the eye. He's like, never, ever get back on another horse. <laughs> And I went home that night, I was really upset, and I said to mum, like, oh, dad, you know, he's cut me off, and rah, rah, and she's, I'll go and talk to him. I'm like, oh, beautiful, I played one against the other, and uh, I heard him talking in the kitchen, and mum came back in, and she's like, no, I think it's best. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they thought I could ride work, I couldn't, and then they're like, oh, we'll just go, you know, saddle up this horse. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, well, you just... What can you do? I'm like nothing. Like, I don't really know how to do anything. So the first couple of weeks was just picking up shit, pretty much, and um, literally, literally, it's and and point. then uh, I thought oh, I don't really like this. Like it sucks. So I better learn pretty quickly. <clears throat> but I was so lucky to find that organisation because they were happy to give this young kid that had no idea a go. And I think when you think about Lloyd and, mm. and are you dealing closely with Lloyd? Lloyd was there every day. Was every day. So at the time, zipping. Yeah, the um, what, so this is like 2007? Yeah, so, yeah, around yeah. that. Yeah, so, so efficient? Like, efficient? So funny thing about efficient, um, uh, Lloyd had purchased all these horses from New Zealand and, and um, he, they wanted an extra person to go in the truck to pick them up from the airport. So I, like, I went out and... They finally like, found a job for you. Yeah, that was about, <laughs> yeah, sit there and shut up. There was about uh, six horses that, that came over from New Zealand and this grey got off and he was a bastard. He was a bastard yeah. of a horse. And uh, there was an old bloke there and he was a pretty wise old bloke and he goes, that grey horse will make a horse. Like, it would take two <laughs> steps off the plane, he said, the grey horse. And he was probably the cheapest one right. out of all of them. And about four days later, I was in efficient. He was a yearling, and I was. It was efficient. Though. Yeah, and I was mucking out, mucking out its box, and uh, I turned around, and this grey thing just launched at me from wow. one side of the box cool. to the other, and um, bailed me up in the corner. I was just screaming, and uh, it was, he was a terrible colt, savage. He tried to, you know, he really, really dangerous sort of horse, and they gouted him. Um, but it was it was great. Like went on like that whole journey with, with mm. efficient, and when he won the Derby, and 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 very came, very good horse came back. Incredible Star. horse, yeah. incredible horse. And you went as a three year old. No. Uh, he won so the Derby didn't the derby. back up. It did was he? the he last was... year that if you won the Derby, you could have gone. He got you into the and cup. There was that whole week yeah. of conjecture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, 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 he was running for sure. He was going to run. Yeah, he pulled up pulled up sore out of the Derby, and they they pulled the pin on him. But um. It was an incredible thing and, and, and to be a part of that organisation. And to be honest, I think if I never lobbed in that environment, I probably would have, wouldn't have stuck it out in racing. And that, there's 20, 30, 50 of me that, that were fortunate enough to go under that Lloyd Williams, mm. Macedon Lodge sort of banner. Mm. Um, and, and people think about the good horses that he's produced. It's nothing on the people he's produced mm, yeah. in the industry. And mm. that's a perception, isn't there, that like Lloyd's sort of like, you know, oh, you know, people want to be against him. He's got all the money and all the horses. That's Australian. That's Australian cop. Yeah, but <laughs> what you're saying is they produce some great sort of racing Stuff. people yeah. and spend a lot of money, like giving yeah. you a job. You've got no, great for the no industry. clue. The people he used to bring out from Ukraine uh, yeah, yeah. and sponsor them, mm. put them up, find them houses bring their families over. Mm. It's phenomenal, you know, and, and he, he's been a massive, massive uh, help for uh, the ra racing in Victoria, especially. Um, Did you buy Bassinet Lodge? No, underbidder, <laughs> underbidder, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> missed by that much. When he, they, they, they brought Bassinet Lodge and I was like, no way, like I was 19 living in Melbourne, like there's no way I'm going up there. Mm. And they're like, no, like we've got, we've got Land Cruiser and petrol card and this and all the mates like, oh, you got the best job in the world. I'm like, yeah, I've just I've only got to drive up to Macedon, 
and back every day at snow drummers three weeks i'm like i'm done <laughs> i'm done like it would be, get it would snow there in the morning and right. then you come back in the afternoon and it would be colder and the wind <laughs> would just come in sideways the first job you had to do was go around and break all the ice off the horses in the paddocks uh, water troughs and that and I'm, no, this was not in the brochure i am right. i'm out so uh russell cameron um had just come back he was a private trainer in new zealand and he'd just come back and he took over lloyd's stable so i literally like stayed in the same stable and and started working for russell and and yeah that was a terrific terrific time in my life just just on that he would have that environment would have been fantastic for you do you use that as a role model now currently as a trainer i've seen a few tweets you've got young people on board and you you see them they see you as a mentor as you saw lloyd or i think um it, it, it was a very unique environment because because of the, the funds that were behind the operation, it wasn't a true business. Right. And it was... It's about winning, not about yeah, making money. I, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I think probably Lloyd's greatest comment, and it still sticks with me now, um, unfortunately, you know, we had a, a two-year-old that was going really, really well, and it was... You get very close because you're working one-on-one and this horse was smoking up. Anyway, went sore right before um, one of the main two-year-old races and uh, it looked like his career was in doubt. And um, I was quite upset because he sort of worked with these horses every day. And um, he said to me, he said, Mitchell, there's casualties at war. (laughs) And that was his mindset. Mindset. You know, like he was was a terrific man, but a a hard man in his... And he was knew that it is going to cost X amount and it's going to take so many horses, but I want these results. Yeah. But it's a very different formula when you want to go out and be a trainer yeah. and you've got to run a, a sustainable business and mm. try and get decent results. So um, I probably learned a lot about nurturing staff and, and staff retention and how important staff are because that was his biggest and i I think he probably got a lot of that from that casino world Mm. and stuff where you know getting high quality staff and retaining high quality staff and keeping them happy Mm. was was the most important thing for his his business and and it's so true i think racing probably lacks a lot of that how many staff do you have at the moment about 14. a lot it is Yeah. yeah it's a lot and and i think there's one there's one person older than me like I'm 34. Really? And there's wow. so we've got 14, yeah. and there's one person old, older than me. He's still recruiting from Europe and uh, Ukraine, like in the spirit of Lloyd. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I um, I actually matched with a girl on Bumble. This is serious. We're like stuff. texting back and forth, and she's like, oh, "I actually need a bit of part-time work." And I'm like, "Oh, she's like, I used to work <clears> in Melbourne and that." And um, Anyway, that side of things didn't work out, but she did some casual shifts for the next three or four months, and it's, it's a terrific world. Do you like shoveling? Do you like so. shoveling? I get my staff. Like I get my staff from absolutely anywhere, all, all walks of life. <laughs> but um, you get the staff from Bumble and stuff like that. Or? A couple of people, a couple I of could, staff might get a few. But... I could do some interviewing if you like. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, we're up here at Magic Millions, mate? And firstly, where are you staying? But what's the week, Manti? Why you're up here? Are you just networking? Are you Socialising, just... Oh, I think it's one of them. It, it's, it's an absolute mecca for, for racing. And I think whether you train in Aubrey or you have no... You're just a punter and an enthusiast um, or whether you're coming here to spend $8 million on uh, a couple of I'm Invincible Colts. Mm. If, you're not, if you love racing and you're not here this week, you, you sort of need a pretty genuine excuse. And... Mm. It's just terrific to catch up with people that you haven't seen for a while. It's a great vibe. I think it's that real, everyone just celebrates racing this week and it's become such an event. I mean, every week it seems like people get here, every year, it's like they get here two or three days earlier and earlier Mm. and I'm sure in 10 years it'll be a month. Well, the wave race, race day has been phenomenal as well. Like, I get up here just for that now. Yeah. It's great. So it's extended the carnival a bit. And I've noticed some people have actually come up for that race day Mm. a few days and then they go home before the the Mm. the big event so uh it's just terrific uh i've been coming the last few years and and now we're in a bit more of a position to to be a little bit more active at the sales we've we've built up a bit more uh clientele so that side of things has ramped up a little bit so uh, i look forward to especially when you so you know i work christmas morning christmas afternoon 
New Year's morning, New Year's mm. afternoon, and you sort of need it in your mind to be like, you know what, I've just got to get through this because next week and the week after I'll be, I'll be at Magic Millions. You weren't going to come. No. Get your arm twisted. I wasn't going to come early on. <laughs> I think I'd do that every year, but um, <laughs> fortunately enough, I, I've lobbed up. I've, I've sacrificed my, my nice flights and good accommodation to... Steph Grantal and I'm staying at a, a crack den in, in Broad Beach. Um, what about the sun coming up here at like Oh, it's ridiculous. Criminal. I, I put that in the lay bin today, actually. It's ridiculous. Really? I'd wake no, up they need to... Get daylight savings. I don't... The whole... The shade I, or something. The whole daylight savings, I don't... But they just need to change the total time of everything in Queensland because... People go to bed at 9.30 here. It, it was honest. I'm not. I'm not joking. I reckon yeah. it was 25 past four this morning. You got blinds right, at your place? Uh, beating in, beating down on me. No blinds at your place? No, no, no mirrors either. <laughs> Anyone giving it a vacuum or anything? No, it's it's really weird. There's like these these op shop plates on the wall, and they've tried to style it in this like Greek 1940s. <laughs> the aircon just it just punches out like a. Indian t- back of an Indian takeaway. I'm pretty sure like there's some curry scents coming out of it. It's just so like where I'm saying is so bad to think that I've you know gone to the sales and bought this like deep field filly and I'm going back to where I'm staying. Um, <laughs> but you know that's the glory of racing. That's sure, the, if you that's, rang Steph, she might swap rooms for an island. I might ring Jerry and say, hey, listen, I've, <laughs> I've, fo- I've forked out. You should for actually. Money. We're any, staying at the Meriton. Any West chance West. of an upgrade? <laughs> So we're staying at the Meriton West Steph, so... Yeah, you've got a fold out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then we, yeah. You can absolutely come stay. And then you guys are staying here, which is... Well, the mansion. Yeah. The surely there's a spare bed for you. You'll be right. Um, just, I've got to get something off my chest. Last night, you said goodbye to me and you chant me. Wow. Oh. You chant me. Seriously? I didn't even know this was a thing. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Oh, no, so, I was sitting... <laughs> you said goodnight, champion. And I mentioned this on a Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. <coughs> oh. There is a big difference between, between champion, champion and champion. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I raised this on radio, and apparently there's not. And she said... You need to have a look. It's a Jack, Jack, Dickens, so, so. Jack Dickens was there, and he heard this, and he wouldn't mm. let it go or not. So if I, if I leave today and say, see champion, am I being disrespectful? Mm. <laughs> no, you are, because you, you, it's you, like you don't know square. the guy's or girl's name. Well, I, I'm also. Like, oh, I'm not, I didn't. I didn't take offence to it, but I got abuse after that saying. Like, I, I, the, I get that. I get that. It's like that. I don't have the energy to rack my brain to think <laughs> of your name. I get that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you copy you're copying. You copying it from from the, those mailbag blokes, and that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't even rate. Like, you <laughs> know what true. I mean? They wouldn't. They wouldn't know. Apparently, true. one of them's taking us on tomorrow. Curly. Great. Yes. Curly. He's. He is. Big competition. I've seen that all they've done is play golf since they've been here anyway. So. Well, you, you, you might have given them a few Hitting tips. The yeah, I, might, I might take them on on Monday. That's a good idea. You bought a horse today? I did. Well done. Yeah, yep, yep. Had a, had a decent crack, so brought a really nice deep field filly. Um, I brought a capitalist colt out of here last year that I had no owners for, and Steph and I just really loved it. And I reckon hands down, he hasn't raced yet, but uh, I reckon it's the best horse I've ever had. So... Dang. Easy wow. formula. Go back to Newgate, find mm-hmm. a find a nice horse. They just produce dead set guns, and even like Newgate slow horses would would still win you nineteen races at Aubrey. So it's a pretty good <laughs> formula to have. So just, they, they Newgate produce. Yeah, they, they bred the capitalist colt, and they they bred this the deep field the, filly. The interesting thing about Newgate is it's set up by Henry Field, who's sort of all of our age, which is he's done really well to set it up in such a short time so at his Hen- age too Henry and I had a bit of a, 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 a tee off uh, today literally I was teeing off on the 6th and um, this filly got passed in he's like I'm not selling this for under 100 I said well I'm at 90 and I haven't got one cent more and, and then I f- hit a 6 when I, sh- I, I, I should have hit a 7 I put it way over the back and by the time I got the wedge out he was at 95 <laughs> I said, mate, I don't have more than 90. Uh, and by the time I bladed that over the back of the green and still needed the wedge, uh, we were at 90 and it was sold. So, is, that, is that how um, you bought it? Yeah, so I made you bought it on, on the golf yeah, course? Yeah, yeah, I made, I made five on a par three and bought a lovely deep field filly. So, wow. what a life. And you won the long drive contest. Well, I did. You can sell the driver now yeah, and you won pay you an extra five. Yeah, yeah, I will probably need to when I've sold, you know, 13% of this deep field filly <laughs> by next week. But... Um, yeah, it was great. And that's, that's what's great about being up here. There's just, everyone's yeah. doing mm. something or going somewhere and come and do this and come and do Is that. Is it the best networking event? Because obviously there's 
so much like the Everest, Melbourne Cup Carnival, Warnable. all those kinds of Warnable. Is this the best networking event? I think so. Yeah. I, I think that... It's just, um, I guess the timing is good. It's the weather is so People, good. Yeah. Everyone wants one little house last holiday before they go back mm. and get into the... Well, you've just done your time with your family for two weeks, and now it's like, That's so right. true. And I think it's <laughs> easy, like, for me, you'd be like, uh, now I, can do I really train like. in Warbury. You know, the Magic <laughs> Millions is for... Uh, the elite and they're, they're yes. going there and it's for the million dollar horses mm. and the, the, the big group one trainers. But it's not. There's there's a mm. whole level of people here that are just genuine owners, punters, racing enthusiasts mm. and they're here. They're not anywhere near that level but they're still here having fun and going out for dinner and playing golf um, and, and they're as a bigger part of this carnival as the, the top 20%. And it's an interesting question. How did you end up in Albury? training there uh so i trained in mornington yep so i left melbourne to work for jason warren i worked for him for four or five years as his assistant trainer which was fantastic great bloke it was but my time had sort of come to be like i've got to go and have a crack at this mm. so um yeah started training in mornington and it was a, a really hard slog like uh, I, I'd done, I thought I'd done well, like we won a group three within our first 18 months and we had 20 in work, but it was just, I, I found so hard to, to open and, and start a small business with no financial backings. Like mm. I didn't start with a mill and go and buy a property and um, you know, I was renting, renting my house, renting the stables. Um, I remember going to this auction of this absolute you know, dilapidated house and stables and it made, you know, 1.1 and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, what, what am I doing? Like, I'm just going to be renting everything for the rest of my life. And then with everything just happening with tab highways and country championships and Kosciuskos and every time I seemed to open the social media, there was some new thing happening in New South Wales for a country trainer. And mm, Victoria had just become... I mean, you, you open the form and whether you're at Ballarat or Echuca or Donald or Bansdale, mm. it's just the same yeah. jockeys. It's the same trainers mm. where New South Wales is such a bigger and different landscape. You're not going to have a Port Macquarie trainer running one at Aubrey and you're no. not going to have uh, Bjorn and Annabelle and, and all those guys come to Wagga on a Tuesday. They slide a couple down here and there, but everyone sort of has their area and you can pick your yep. area and you can try and make the best of it and it's been terrific you know we've been able to you know how long have you been there for four years yeah yeah four years so you know I, I, I took 16 horses up there I was absolutely cast I had nothing um and we just got there rented some stables and got going and you know from a from a professional point of view it's worked really well from a personal sort of um financial being able to to buy and build a house and, and yeah, that's awesome. you know put so put something behind so that you know what in, in ten years or fifteen mm, years or whatever yeah. you actually got something um, and that's ultimately why we all do so, it. So you built a house in Aubrey, have you? Uh, yeah, I, um, I I I purchased a um, weanling on, on the internet and Ocean Park for nine grand. All right. That's how most uh, stories about building houses and start. I'm not. Is this I'm, a good, is this a good pun absolutely story? blind. Yeah. Uh, and I I bought it for nine grand, and I woke up. I'm I'm not joking. I woke up the next morning, and I had this like notification. Congratulations! I was like, oh, oh I don't have nine grand. <laughs> uh, so went halves with a with a guy, and I was like, listen, you know, oh, this is really nice. <laughs> um, ne oh, what do you like about it? Never seen it was in New Zealand, <laughs> and ended up. Six months later, I sold it at the sales for 160. Wow! Um, how did it, how did it, what, what made it sell? It was just a really nice pot, was it? Or oh, just a, was it blind? Like nah, it? honestly, I, re I like it better than that. And um, no, it was just. But a, you bought it as a weanling, so you sold it as a yearling. Yeah, yeah. 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 But no, it's, is that called pin hooking? Yeah, so it just grew out <laughs> strong. Um, stallion kicked along. It was by Ocean Park. He had a really good run yeah, at the right. time. Uh, and at the same time, um, I had a, another little horse that I owned and uh, I sold him to, to, to Singapore for not a, a huge amount of money. But then I had a, a, a heap of cash come in at once and I just went and brought a block of land awesome. in Aubrey for like 125 that's what, that's grand. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Okay. And I just right. went and 
Brought this block of land. Sounds like Tommy Smith starting. And I just sat on it for a while because I didn't have any more money to even borrow to, to build on it. But I went and brought this block of land and then, yeah, built a house on it. And then I've just recently sold that house. And it, it, it's... You're away. I couldn't do that in Mornington, yeah. you know, yeah, because really, to get yeah. into the market, yeah. I would need a fortune. And so what's really hard with these young people coming through is people forget. It's so easy to look at stats and... Um, Runners to winners, and and he, you know, at, at this price point, they've got a twenty percent, mm. you know, profit margin, this and that, on all trainers. But we actually have to run a proper small business and train horses, mm. and it's mm. freaking hard. And you said something which is crazy before. You've got eleven. You got to send out eleven hundred accounts. Last month we we sent out eleven hundred individual accounts. Yeah. 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 Just, so two percent, three percent. You know, but ten percent of the have software to do it all, right? Yeah, we've got a great program, but those people do need hunting up and totally. And, and their bills are sixty bucks, and they, and they just go, oh yeah, I'll pay it next week. They don't care about sixty bucks. And to then. sign <laughs> in and out of horses, and, 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 and it's a big <laughs> operation. But then, with fourteen, fifteen staff, you know, super and making sure your tax is up to date, and if there's changes in the award, and making sure you're paying everyone correctly, and all that mm. sort of stuff. We don't have a team, we don't have a HR, we don't have a team of six or seven people behind us that are all over that. It's got to be you. Mm. So you've got to get a racing manager or anything like that. So Steph Grantel works uh, full time for me and that's it. It's it's her and I that do all the back end stuff. She seems good fun. I've never met her, but she's always good good value on Twitter and stuff. She puts up with me, so (laughs) she's terrific. And and Steph, I met Steph Grantel the first day I worked, I walked in at Lloyd Williams oh, wow. and I had no idea what I was doing and she quickly picked up on that. And she's in Albury too, lives in Albury too? No, she, she's living in Melbourne. She right. comes up to Albury, yeah. but yeah, she took me sort of under her wing and just was like, just <laughs> do this and do that. And our friendship um, has, has just been rock solid since that first day I walked, worked in at Lloyd. So now to be working with her, she picked this horse out today. Um, I, I, I hadn't seen the horse until I saw it once yesterday and she rang me saying, she's like, we're buying this. This is what's happening. We need, we, we want this filly in the stable. That's so to have someone like that, yeah, it's, 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 it's mm. awesome. Did he catch up with Alan Andreas last night at the Betfair function? He logged? I did, Big Al. He's in Albury, isn't he? He is, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He's yeah. In yeah. Are you going to buy you any horses or? Oh, I've got th- probably two or three for, for Al. Have you? Yeah. Right. Uh, he is, uh, I would have to say one of the most outstanding people to train for really? of all time. Well, yeah, that surprised a lot of people to hear that. Alligator blood, right? Yeah. Uh, probably yeah. Alan is is one of the best examples that I think of. Uh, you never ever judge a book by its cover because he, ninety nine percent of people that you would ask, oh, is this and that, and he's very vocal on social media and that. The horse's welfare for him is always number one priority. He will have a horse that runs terrible. The first thing he will ring and say, hey, mate, horse okay? Yep. Oh, well, never mind. Wasn't our day today. Yeah, right. Outstanding. Never right. gets in the way. Run it wherever you want it. Um, and if, I, if every owner I had was like him, uh, I might make my job a hell of a lot easier. Is it true that he plays Sweet Caroline to horses before he buys them? Hasn't at my stable. Is that- but he was telling a few people last night at the function. He d- is has that true? You'd... Oh, I don't know. So I'm when he plays Sweet Caroline to them. And, and see how the horses react. react to wow. the... Oh, and he sings to them. himself for the Everest, oh, Everest victory. That's right. Oh, it well, might be yeah. something you can adopt. <laughs> I, I said to him last night, I said, we, well, now that the sales are over, we might need to go down to the, the winner's board behind the thing with a bit of chalk and <laughs> cross out that. I, I thought it was funny. He... <laughs> I think he thought I was serious. I was like, no, no, we're actually not doing this. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a good punting story about Magic Venus, don't you? You're, a few people got a whisper about one of yours? Yeah, so it must, have, it, was a, it must have been three or four years ago. It was the first Magic Millions that I'd um, come to since I moved to Aubrey. And we'd, we'd got this horse off Tony McAvoy for like 15 grand and it had run fourth in like a Blue Diamond Prelude, fourth in a Chairman's, and um, had, hadn't done much since. And it was pretty cactus when it came, and we had to do a, a, a fair amount to sort of get it back on track. And it was going to a 900-metre maiden at Queanbeyan on the, on the Saturday mm-hmm. of the Magic Millions. So we'd been getting this thing ready, and there was a few boys that had sort of 
helped me out to, to get going in Aubrey and they were in the horse and it was just an all in job. And they're, I'm like, I've got to go to the Magic Millions. And they're like, oh, you're not going to go. You're not going to be there. I'm like, don't worry. I've got good staff going. Everything's going to be fine. So I'm just, like, on the Friday, I'm just tipping it to everyone. I'm like, yeah, I've got what price was it? Uh, it was about three bucks at okay. the time. And um, Saturday morning, I went out to the sales and every second person's coming up to me like, oh, put the mail on your thing, call me in, put the mail on your thing. This guy comes up to me and he's like, Oh, and he showed me this text from um, <clears throat> Darren Weir, and it was like, best bet in Australia today, this thing at Queen Bee. And I was like, <laughs> so I've started to just like absolute sweat. Pool. I've gone from being just overzealous, like just cocky <laughs> as, to being like, oh, this is going to get beat. You know? <laughs> and it was really late, and there were real small fields at Queen Bee, and so the 900 metre maiden was the last. Mm. It was a quaddy leg, 900 metre maiden. Probably defines Queen Bee in itself. <laughs> and I've gone over to watch it, and everyone's just, there's probably only two races left. So everyone's just piled in from back from the, the sale, from the races Did to the sale. It... Got into like dollar eighty maybe. Oh, wow. yeah. And uh, I'm chips in, everyone's chips in. We gotta put the video up underneath this. Yeah, and yeah, um, what's the name? What's the name yeah, of the we're in, you know, what's the, what's the a Logan River. Logan. So the tote, the tote area out the back is just, you know, standing yep. room only. What about sweaty? Everyone's mm. coming up to me, and I just like wanted to die. <laughs> and they've jumped, and all the screens have just gone off. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. so I've I've hightailed out of there, and I've run into the auditorium. And at the back of the bidder's box mm. is Sky oh, 2, you know, Queen yeah. Bien. <laughs> and by that stage, it's sort of like, there's one just like a mile in front. And I'm like trying to work out whether it's it or not. It's been my colours. And yeah, and, and uh, anyway, it's one, it's one by eight. And I've walked <laughs> out there to just this hero's reception, just like I've won the two-year-old race. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm just silence, like, what happened? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and uh and got the cash and like he went on to win eight he won about 150 grand for us won a country cup and that so yeah it was super it was it was it was uh, terrific so yeah that's my magic moon story winning a <coughs> 900 meter maiden <laughs> <Columbian. laughs> best um best horse you've been involved in obviously efficient but probably but best horse you've trained or been involved in your stables or i think it's hard to it's hard to define. The, the, some of the best horses I've had are uh, like that weanling that I sold as a yearling, mm-hmm. a horse I've sold to Hong Kong. Like they've been the best horses for me because they've financially helped me mm. so much. Yeah. Um, from a racing perspective, um, like All My, uh, Almighty Girl, she won a Typhoon Tracy Group 3. You know, we paid 36, 38 grand for it a year, uh, as a yearling sales. I ended up getting you know, nearly a mil for her as a, as a brew mare. Um, you know, she, she's been terrific, but you know, if, if I, if you had to ask me like the best horses that have, have been for me, it's probably two or three that haven't got to the races because I've got my best result. Be out huge of them. for your lifestyle. And huge, life. changed yeah. my life. You know, like, yeah. you know, you sell a horse to Hong Kong and, and you own half of it or all of it or, mm. um, you're doing much of that. Yeah. 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 It's a big part of my business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Really because good. Honestly, like people think, ah, oh, trainers, you know, they just keep the scene and work and mm. send the fees out. <laughs> there is no money in, in training horses. Yeah. There is, a, your margins are so thin. Mm. So you've either got to be getting 10% of a freaking hell of a lot of prize money or you've got to be trading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, you've got, you, you got a question or? No, I mean, uh, one thing that crossed my mind is do you spend a lot of time thinking about getting that one superstar horse or is it just business as usual every day? Like, yeah, if you get, you know, if you get a wing. Sounds sort of like Lloyd might have like trained that idea out of you sort of thing. <laughs> trained yeah, it like, out of like, I mean, of yeah. course you'd want that yes. one horse, but do you, do you approach your business in any way trying to, trying to somehow get hold of that one horse that takes you, you know, it's a, stratosphere It's a good question because I had an interview with Bill Baker the other day, and he hasn't really had that star either. He's a mm. brilliant trainer, his own right, but he hasn't mm. had a, a, a good horse. Black yeah. caviar wings. He's had a Samadad. Because he's a Dundee, he was his dad's horse, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. he had Unencumbered. He won the two. Like, but he hasn't mm. had that star horse that's probably put him on the map. Unencumbered mm. was him in the Magic Millions. But it's a good question. 
I think, when, so when I first started training in Mornington, I just got up every morning and wanted to be Chris Waller. Like I just wanted <coughs> to be, and I went to bed every night sad and depressed and frustrated. And well, like Chris Waller. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the further, each day that got on, I just got a little bit further away from being Chris Waller. Um, and I, honestly, I, I knew I wasn't happy, but I didn't realise how unhappy and probably how very bad of a place I was in until I moved to Aubrey. Mm-hmm. And I, I nearly stopped training before mm-hmm. I moved to Aubrey because I was... Yeah, it, it was. It's really hard. You put a lot of pressure on yourself, and you want to, mm. you know, you want to be big overnight, and and every day you get up and you're a little bit further away from that, and you just think, and, and then you put the financial pressures on, and so I said, Aubrey or or no more, mm. you know. And um, I went to Aubrey, and I said, well, I, I'm going to start fresh, and if I can sustain a lifestyle that I, I, I want to live by training horses, then you've got to. That's success. Like that's mm-hmm. successful, and I've I've lived by that theory since I've I've moved there. So I don't have that burning desire to get the next star. Star, and I've got to be really realistic. Like, uh, so how are you going to get it when you're not? How, how the horse, you know? So uh, there's it'd a, be just complete luck if you somehow got a twenty thousand dollar horse that became the next. Exactly time right, and and yeah. the, the chance of me whether I train for the next ten or twenty or thirty years. The chance of me being in Aubrey and retiring as a Group One winning trainer are very, very slim, and I don't even think about it because mm. I don't need to get, in my eyes, I don't need to get that horse or train that Group One winner mm. to be successful. I mean, we all want to get as good a horses as we can, but I think the people that live by that, especially from a business point of view, so many trainers are like. Yeah. Out of shit. And, uh, <laughs> if if, if yeah. this thing wins next Wednesday, mm. oh, I'm sweet. And you, you can't have that. You, you really need to run a business like every horse is going to be a 58 er and anything better is, a, is, is good for you, a positive for your business model. So, mm. as much as I dream about it, I really don't let it get into my brain too much because mm. you just live in disappointment. <laughs> Do you think like a really good horse? can only get to a certain level being amongst horses that are worse than it. Like, would it good, environment. Yeah, like, would, yeah. It, would it benefit going to track work at Rose Hill, Randwick, where there's other faster horses? Or do you think as a trainer that you can turn, a good horse, can, you can do things that makes it get, realise its potential? Like, would Winx be Winx if it was trained? Yeah, yeah if, it, if Winx... Yeah, Winx would it be Winx. Yeah, yeah, like, if Winx was only just beating the horses around Winx would have been sold after 3am <laughs> at, at Albury. Like, yeah. I think a lot of it comes well, down... Well, we want to know, what are, the question is basically, what are the animals like? Can you yeah. make them be as best as they can? I think it, no one can train a horse to be faster, you know? Faster, okay. You, you, they, they have what they have, and mm. it's about getting the best yeah, out are. of them. But I think probably, you know, no doubt what the city has is it's the cream of the crop around facilities. Facilities, You also have okay. the best, tra- best farriers... Mm. You have the best mm. vets. You have the yeah. best access to everything. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why a lot of good horses are really uh, best situated in that environment. Mm. And it's not uh, so much the people that are training them. Like, honestly, I think if you gave the same horse to the top 15 or 20 trainers in Australia, you're near on going to get the same result. Okay. They're good. Mm. They're, they're, they're good. If you... If you gave the same yearling to Annabelle uh, that, that you give to Kieran, that you give to Mick Price, that you give to Freedies, mm-hmm. I, I reckon you near on get the same result. Yeah, right. Um, I, I think that, that there's not a lot of, between the top yeah. trainers, and I think they're excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what your facilities around uh, in that environment is a big, is a big thing. Yep. It's a massive, massive okay. thing. Okay, good. Good question. Thanks, That's really man. interesting. Um, what, Two points. What's, <laughs> Try it hard. You, you mentioned success. What does that look like for you? Have, are you on the journey? Have you, are you happy now? Have you, you got more to come? What's Define success. I think it's really hard. Like I've been thinking about this a lot lately. You seem like a deep thinker. but like You come across as a comedian on social media. But you seem like you... Yeah, you're I, and... I, I try to. But I've been, <laughs> I've been thinking about it heaps lately. Um, my, from a professional point of view, my biggest 
hurdle now is how much I've fallen in love with Aubrey. Right. I can't. And that's so cool. I can't. It's such in, an affordable city. Yeah, I can't even, in, yeah. even think about not living there. What happens if the really? Chinese restaurant shuts down? I'd just open one and live in Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't even think about a world where I don't live there. Okay. And, wow. and I think I'd probably prefer to live in Aubrey now and not train anymore. Um, I wouldn't take... If someone rang me and said, listen, there's 10 boxes at, you're at getting a, Warwick a Tourism, Farm. Aubrey Tourism. Mm. Getting, yeah, getting you'll see the promo at the bottom <laughs> of this, uh, the, the banner come across. Um, yeah, I, I just, I'm not interested in, in moving. I, I don't want to live in Sydney. I don't want to live mm. anywhere else. <clears throat> uh, I've found a place where I've never been happier in my whole life. I've got a, the best, created this great network of friends and staff. And my mindset is making that as, as pleasurable and, and as, as successful as, as I can make that. And that's not going to be... Um, winning premierships and having star cults and things like that. And mm. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. You've got an interesting model in terms of your, um, your clientele, I guess, is different to a Chris Waller and your big trainers. And you've also got a social media presence. It's almost like you're breaking the barriers between an old school training methodology and very private, not much information, no social presence back 10, 20 years ago. You, you tend, tend to break the mould. Is that something you've gone out to seek to do or is it just who you are? I've always, you know, as far as, you know, social media and being a bit of a, a jokester and a, that, that's always been me before we, we, we started. And I actually yep. have a lot of people come to me like, oh, you know, what, who, who does your <laughs> marketing <laughs> advice and who does this for you? And I'm like... Uh, <laughs> You know, cool. six, six lemon rusky cans <laughs> and a half a Hawaiian pizza, and that's my, our marketing department. But um, <laughs> it, it, I think I go through some of your tweets in a minute too. Especially racing people and 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 the racing and breeding and even the punting industry, mm. I think they they undersell sort of the intelligence of a lot of the general public. Yep. You know, I think I, I think you're 100 percent right. There's a bubble, and I, I don't see, actually think it's I a see bubble. trainers, especially trainers. You know, we have two runners at Sandown today. Good luck to yes. all connections. Like, who gives a shit? No one. No one cares. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Whereas even you tweet you, like, update Lawn Dunn still them, fat. It's even a cruel if you world. own those, <laughs> what did he say? Lawn's done, still oh, yeah, fat. Yeah, it's yeah, a cruel yeah, world. Like, Eddie, you're producing content like that. And and you know, no one wants, no one cares about that stuff. And then. They tweet those six times, they tweet when they get a winner, mm. and then they go and buy a yearling and smash it on social media and they go, oh, we've had not had much response. Yeah. Mm. People don't know who you are. People don't know whether they mm. like you. Yeah. Mm. I think trainers' biggest downfall is all they worry about is putting their, their business out there and not themselves. Yes. And people will get involved with you, whether you're a trainer or a syndicator mm. or anyone, yeah. if they like you. And don't get me wrong, for every four or five people that are like, oh, Mitch is great, he's seen some people like, oh, what a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that's fine because, you know what, we're not going to get along if you do race a horse with me anyway. So mm. we've, yeah. we've, we've knocked that on the head before it even mm. happens. But you've reached a different demographic, which is fantastic. You're getting different demographic into racing as opposed to the old school mentality of 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, and, and early on, I, I realised and... and pretty much worked out how the whole racing industry works. It works on punting funds it, so transparency is, mm -hmm. is, 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 is massive. We'll talk about this. Um, and I think a lot of old trainers don't realise that. Yep. Like, it, you can't go and race for the money that we race for and yeah. expect to keep all your car, cards close to your chest. Mm -hmm. Like. It just doesn't work, but they want to have two bites of the apple and not mm. trial horses, not jump out horses, not tell anyone when it's gelded. Oh, I don't want to tell you if it's had blinkers on or not. That's, mm. that's my thing. But, oh, but I still want to go and race for 150 grand every Saturday. Yeah, and great. I want the, the turnover needs to be the same. That's a great point. Yeah. So if you struggle to realise where mm. the money comes from, you'll, you'll just go broke in this industry. Mm. You guys must be strong on that. Oh, the you are obviously Absolutely. with what you're doing with the fairness for wagering and, and whatnot. Yeah, so what exactly is what? Like punters, like punters fund the industry. Like we mm. need everything we do 
yeah. needs to be catered towards making it a punting friendly. But that, they are your main customer. And, like, you, and you guys at Wolfden. I know the customers. I know the trainers to see the owner bills come in, but mm. like you I'll, I'll, think I'll, above that. I'll give you yeah. a prime Big example. I, I took a dollar sixty-five pop to Corowa the other day. A <laughs> dollar sixty-five. Had one start. Anyway, I got off the float and it was acting a bit weird. And that mm. I'm like, oh, it's a young horse. Mm. And I took it into the tie-up stalls and I, I took the bit out of its mouth and it was all it was acting really weird. Anyway, I put my hand up and it had this little cut mm. in, on the inside of its mouth. And I'm talking, it was like this big, yeah. right? But it was in its head. But and we it, know as humans, when you get those yeah, little cuts, aren't they? Like, and with I'm young annoying. horses, they're like kids. Like yeah. if they fall yeah. over and graze their knee, it's broken. Like, yeah. And this horse, <laughs> it had this cut in its mouth and it's annoying it. And I'm like, oh, I better not run this. Yeah. Mm. So I went into the steward's room. I'm like, oh, listen, this is, I don't know how it's done it, but it's acting real weird. It's a dollar sixty. It, it shouldn't go around. Like it's not. Mm. And you, so, are, you are looking after the punter. So we scratched the horse. How they take yeah. that, by the way, the stewards. They were fine Great because yeah, you know, good. and the vet came and looked at it, and he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, you, you yeah. can't." <clears throat> It doesn't need stitches yeah. or anything, yeah. but... A tiny card is yeah. so annoying. And I had yeah. people come up to me like, did you really scratch that horse because of that cut? But I'm like, yeah. If it hadn't have reacted the way yeah. that yeah. it Could would... Then I, is it the, the one horse you took all the way to Corowa? Yeah, well, that was it. Like, right. Put on the float and sent it home. Were you tempted to run it? No. That's great. Because it's just... People are, are, are invested <clears throat> on, on what they, what they see... And, and all the data that they have available. Now, if that horse sweats up in the mounting yard and, and loses its cool before it goes mm. to the barrister, that's out of my control. Of course. Yeah. And if you, if you want to go that next level and have someone on course, if you want to have mm. that sort of stuff and wait till they go on the barriers, barriers to monitor that stuff, that's up to you. But if anyone has that piece of information that a horse is, they really feel like mm. it's not going to run well, then... If in doubt, pull them out. You know, it's not fair on anyone. It's not fair on the owners. It's not fair on the jockey. And most of all, forget about everything else. It's not fair on the horse. Mm, mm. Sure. Yeah. You know, the young horse, it's not happy. You're going to go out there and run it and it's going to have a terrible experience. Mm. No one wins. Yeah, there might be flow on effects to that too. Like it's next start, it might not race they're not, well. And, and, mm. and they're, not, they're not dumb animals. They're very mm. intelligent. That horse, young horse, it's second start in a race, it goes out. And, it, and then all of a sudden it starts associating racing with pain, mm. you know, it doesn't take them much to go, no, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to borrow yeah. this. Mm. Mm. Do you have, do you have a bet yourself? Uh, yeah, I've been like terrible lately. I've had this, uh, I had a good run, um, but I like to... On all horses, your horses? Oh, there's nothing I love more than going down to the, one of the pubs in Aubrey on a Saturday when I don't have a runner and just having a 50 a on everything that even just remotely I know in all parts of the, <laughs> Gamble all parts by the, way. Of the country and just being like <laughs> everyone else. Yeah. I very, very rarely back my own horses because right. I've worked for a lot of trainers that mm. are punters and they are just, there's not one I know that it hasn't cooked them. Mm because they start going bad and then they start seeing things that aren't really yeah. there mm, and they're in the hole and one will work on Tuesday and it'll work all right, but, mm. oh, that worked good, oh, it'll win. You're like, mm. they're getting their own it head. won't, like, mm. Mm. and then the, 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 the area between being a trainer and a punter, it gets very great and mm. it starts crossing and it never ends, mm. it never ends well. Um, it's a real art being a punting trainer. And it's, not, it's not easy. Yeah. Imagine it. And you yeah. don't need to be. I understand, you know, 15 or 20 years ago when people were punting trainers because when you're racing for, for eight grand to the winner, mm. you need to set one up and, and have a go. Mm. And you don't need to punt to make money being a trainer or an owner in Australia. Mm. That goes to your point about the nature or the health of the industry at the moment and prize money you race for. There's no real need to hide horses at trials or be sneaky because you're racing for great money. No, and, and you have a look at these sales, you know. Mm, mm, yes, mm, off the charts. Yes, they're mental, but why shouldn't they be? Yeah. Because rate like the prize money's never been stronger. It's got no remote sign of stopping. Mm -hmm. What a great time to invest. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I was getting my hair cut yesterday. Young's, Just for this? Yeah, young this. So he's like, isn't aren't all the races fixed and that? I was like, 
They don't need to fix. No. There's no fixing anymore so in this country. Fixed. Like, why would you need to? Like, when you're racing for so much money, like the jockeys don't need to pull them up and stuff like that. They I get well own. rewarded for trying really hard. Yeah. And um, yeah, they just. It's just foreign. It's like a lot of people not in the industry just don't think that. Yeah. But it's like you don't need to. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing worse as a trainer when when you say to someone that doesn't really know much about racing, mm. and oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, horse trainer. Oh, like the one with the buggy? And you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not the buggy. <laughs> not buggy trainer. <laughs> How do you find, you guys have been doing what you've been doing for a while. Is it as mm. healthy and probably as good as ever to be a, to, to be a punter? Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, it's, it's like, the industry is completely airborne, but like it's, it's super hard to make money. Like as Mitch says, it's, you know, it's really hard. You've got to be really dedicated and work really hard. If you want to consistently year over year make money, it yep. doesn't matter what part of the industry you're in. Same, even with Betfair, like Betfair have to stay focused, keep trying to you know, innovate and stuff. And then it's, it's the same the industry over. Yep. No one gets a free ride, yep. um, but there's great foundations there. So all the different facets of the industry can, can make money if, if they work hard. And you know, you're in the industry to be entertained, which 90, you know, probably 99% of punters and owners are in it for that, um, or you're in it to make money. And Matt's point earlier, like sustainability is key in what you were saying. We need to think about wagering mm. and taxes and everything. We need to actually invest in the future of the sport, not just try and break it down and earn money short term, we need to think long term. Mm. So, really interesting. Um, how's your dating life in Aubrey, mate? I see a few tweets about Aubrey life and going all right? I'm almost starting to think that I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's, I know it seems to be far, I don't, I don't I know it seems it. far-fetched, but, um, so I've got a couple of ground rules, so no, any land, any land cruiser or Murray Cods in profile pictures is a, is a straight up no. Good, okay. good from you. The also one I can't. What are we, what are we running? Is, what it, is, he, is, yeah. is he speeding metaphorically or is no, he? No, 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 no that's actually. what they do. Yeah, no, they, they stand f- like in I front of a photo of a photo fish. Or so or I would say one in three, there's either a Land Cruiser <laughs> with some sort of <laughs> in signature, you know, the script across the Is this the just Aubrey or is this generically? No, it's just a North. Country So we've been standing in front of the Land Cruiser like saying, I yeah, yeah. Well, I'm holding, so holding a fish. Yeah, take, holding take, a fish. Notes, they yeah. love <laughs> camping. Like camping is the f- bee's knees up there. Absolutely. What do you think of camping? Like, Wait, I couldn't over? think of anything worse. I couldn't think of anything worse than camping. It's like imagine like working hard all year, and then your partner says, "We're gonna go somewhere cold, <laughs> and sleep <laughs> on the floor, and set everything up. It's gonna Give be me like chlorine, creature, and creatures <laughs> around you, possibly no internet." That's not a no, holiday. I think that's, that's hell. Sounds like this is what you're. This, this sounds like I'm actually we're Mitch is saying the conversation I've had with my wife. Actually, no. Um, not Mitch's hotel. Yeah, so it's not. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not. It's not great. It's not great. But um, listen, it's, it's fun. It's a very small town, uh, so you've got to be careful. Yeah, I, I matched on Bumble with a girl that works at um, the only coffee place that's open before five thirty, and it's drive through. Mm. And we started chatting away, and then it just dawned on me, there's a 99% chance this is not going to work, and I'm going to have to not have a coffee. <laughs> so I, I just ghosted her. I just, I just straight up, I just pulled the pin, and thankfully it's, it's gone okay, because there's literally one place, it's on public holidays, I have to go to the airport, like full Dale Kerrigan, if she's listening. go to the airport, get a coffee, yeah. get a ticket, Boom gate just to get an instant co- like a, and go to the stables. Yeah. If she's listening, she might be heartbroken, but <laughs> it's a good be aware. Jessica, I'm sorry, and we can work things <laughs> out. <laughs> Coffee fault. comes first. Are you on the apps up here? You working there? Oh no, wait. So no. we got a Too couple hard? of this young... is this is way out of my league. I, I, right. I had a little flick through yesterday, yeah. and honestly, I thought I was on. Massive, I thought I was on Instagram. Great. I was like, <laughs> not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> Wouldn't even insult myself. <laughs> Absolutely, like it, it's pretty much on, but, but me then, being then, on the then, apps then, here is like looking you're, at you're, most of the years. You're many grades above them, or they're oh. many. Grades oh no, above I'm them. like oh, oh, no. forty-five benchmark points below them. <laughs> right, yeah. Because we were 
Chai was playing on his <coughs> foot and we were like, 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 It's like. not oh, playing, it's, it's very, it's <laughs> serious. I don't it's make not playing, it's very serious, it's, it's, it's serious stuff. I'm running three at the moment. Three apps? Yeah, I'm, I do, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big hinge man. Yeah. yeah it's, and you're a subscriber, like a VIP. You pay? Do you pay? No, no. No, no. no. <laughs> Tinder Gold, you can see who likes you, and I can assure you. It's not worth it. It's paying money to be even more depressed. <laughs> you pay you pay forty nine dollars a month to see where you're at in life. You don't need it. Do, do you want to hear my Tinder story? The great I'll level. make it very quick. Yeah, go ahead. My Tinder story. I've heard it. Yeah. Um, I'll make it quick. So it was like seven years ago, and I'd never been on anything. Got on eHarmony. I was like, hated it. How long um, ago is this? Seven years ago. Seven years ago, yeah. And, I, and just to give you a bit of an idea, I've got a six-year-old. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, we're, cu- we're cutting it fine. <laughs> so I got an eHarmony, hated it, and then um, called one of my mates and we started, he said, get on Tinder. This is back when Tinder wasn't that big. Mm. And then, I um, remember. Yeah. And then he said, get on. I said, no, nah, no. Nah. I said, oh. he said, no, get on Tinder. He said, okay, fine. So I set up a Tinder account on a Wednesday, and then on a Thursday, I'd had no, and I, I went on and liked like 50 ladies mm. by the first I'd had nothing and this is <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying I'm watching my language anyway so on the and I like I was like I just thought they'd all like me back yeah. on the Thursday night and this is this is this Mitch is doesn't like, think that this is not, it's so, not primary school where if like you invite someone to their birthday then but I, I, I was new to it I was like well, why like anyway why this is that? obviously <laughs> arrogant but on the this Thursday night, so I've been on for 24 hours, had no likes. I called my mate and said, the app's broken. <laughs> and, they, and he was like, it's not broken, mate, just hang out. Like when you're playing um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 and you're just pressing <laughs> yeah. the buttons and nothing happens. Like, my controller's broken. <laughs> anyway, so then that's a Thursday. Then I'm like, woke up Friday morning, still not home. I'm like, fuck it, forgot about it. Friday night, I got a match. This mm. girl called Nisha. And then um, I like match. I looked and thought, okay, she's... Seems nice enough. We had a bit of a chat. She's like, let's go. All right, maybe I said, let's go out Sunday night. Went out Sunday night. Um, had an amazing night. When I said, it was like three or four in the morning. Next day, she texted me saying, hey, I had a wonderful time. I'd love to see you again. Then we started hanging out constantly. I haven't really been away from her for one night since. Wow. Um, turned out to be my wife. So, on the, so this is the Sunday Well, night. I just feel great. <laughs> <laughs> then on the Fair. wedding... <laughs> Yeah, but the funny thing too is that I've been on it four years and he met his wife <laughs> in 48 day. hours. But this, so this is, so then this on the week, the, best on the, so the, sun, the Sunday, the Sunday we met and then we were like hanging out. Wednesday we said, this is four days later, let's delete our apps. We're like, yeah. four we're days out. later. So I deleted the app and then the funny thing too was one of my mates like a few days later said, so you deleted the app and in that time did you get any, get any Tinder notifications at all? I'm yeah. like, no, I didn't. He's like, so you got one match the whole time you were on That is turned, amazing. Turned out to be your wife. So it turned out to be my wife and then we had a kid before we'd known each other for a year. Wow. Do you think yeah. Hugh Grant will play you in the movie when this when <laughs> Tinder Tinder hear Maybe. this and they're like, "That's big." So that's yeah. So one match on Tinder, Jeez. and then and the other final thing is when I met her for a date, I saw I was like, "She's the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life." I'm no hope, but I'm just going to have a great night with her and just remember this night forever. And oh, that was the romantic. And that was wow. probably this is, well, this is sick. <laughs> hey, that was, that that was, I'm starting uh, to cry. <laughs> that was probably the um, honestly. I went to bed the right way to play it. I went to bed at three a.m. this morning, and I felt better when I woke up than to right bed, now. Bed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guarantee you, I, if you do want to settle in, and, and that, I guarantee it'll happen in a couple of years. I can just. Oh, there you go. Wow, this is excellent. Like you, but Cupid over here. Okay, so no, because I'm 10 years older than you, right? Yeah. You probably didn't realise that. But I remember being about your age and being like, you know what? Like, I'm never going to find a wife. It's all good. I've got so, race. So in. I've been married. I've got race. I've been married, oh. right? Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. And Have you? Yeah. What? So, so my... <laughs> it's really exclusive for the <laughs> podcast. No, no, yeah, yeah, so oh, I've wow. been married. And so my ex-wife and I are like best friends like yeah. we would talk right. two or three times a day um she was a vet well she is a vet awesome vet and everyone's like oh a vet trainer yeah. what a great combination yeah. what a horrendous combination <laughs> you know it was just like she was down the stairs but it was really hard like i was in a in at mornington i was in the infancies of my business and we just got married and anyway it, it i wanted to move she didn't want to move and and no that was a part of sort of going to aubrey and it was just like this sort of mm. fresh start and we are like closer probably now than ever and it's terrific but um so yeah I've, 
I've been it, but um, I'll, I'll take that on board. Yeah, I'll, take the, yeah. I'll take the Tinder story on board. Well, I've got a good first date story, actually. They had, had a $39 in a betting account, messaging this girl, I think it was Tinder, and it was 40 degrees in Melbourne, February. Ascot came up, I was like, got $39, I have an Ascot caught it. Ascot UK? Or no, Ascot <laughs> WA. <laughs> WA. Yeah. Watched the first race, we had two in the first leg, $8 shot got up, I was like, not a bad start. Drove over to her what house. What trial was? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Drove over to her house, watched the second leg of the quaddy in the car, and it was $16 short or something. A dollar fifty favourite got beaten. I was like, oh, it was sitting pretty here. Had three mm. in that leg, or four in that leg, or whatever. Got up to her house, sat low, sitting literally half an hour into our first date at mm. her house. I'm sweating because it's hot already. Had three horses in the third leg of the quaddy. Sneakily checked the <laughs> check the phone while I'm talking to her on a first date. $139 shot got up. Yeah, I had yeah. it, oh, put it up in a photo, and I'm like, what do I do? I check in dividends, I went to the bathroom, I was like, excuse myself, check, check dividends, I had nine in the last out of 15, and came back, like, heart's beating, I was like, I could win between $15,000 and $30,000 wow. from a $39 bet. Mm. Uh, I've got to tell her, because I'm going to act like the biggest weirdo in the next half an hour if I don't. So I was like, I've had a $39 bet. She's like, what is going on? Yeah. I can win between this much. She's like, starting to get excited. She's like, this is the best first date ever. I'm like, I need a pen and a paper. I need to start hedging. And I'm sitting there. She's giving me like a love heart pad and I'm writing numbers down. <laughs> and she's like, what is happening? Why are you betting on every horse? I'm like, this is too much. And yeah, ended up winning $19,000. And she's good. like, where are we going? Are we getting on a plane? Like, <laughs> she, she was well into it. That's great. Yeah, she, yeah she, I don't think she knew what was going on. But yeah. The most astonishing part of that story is that a I went on a first got, date. Well, you got to go to you got to go to her house on a first date. Yeah, like, yeah, that's true. I didn't yeah. do that. You have to meet with that. Again, just, <laughs> this is going swimmingly for me. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Um, we got some you questions. Got any, any other questions? We got some questions from Twitter. Yeah, they're very food related. We got some, <laughs> your takeaways turn up. We'll suss, suss that out in a minute. But I did hear a doorbell earlier and my. Got a bit of we, we ordered Chinese, we should let it. We just suck your The favourite Chinese got up, meal. yeah. Yep. Are, are you doing the questions or am I? Well, you, can, you can start off if you want. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I'll start with the first one. Extra salt on KFC chips, you're a big KFC man. No. No, extra salt? No, no, no. They pile it on. They as pile it on as is. And it, yeah. I mean, it's good at the time, but an hour later, you, you're paying for but it. Don't doubt the Colonel. The Colonel knows the, amount, <laughs> the right amount to put on. Yeah, no, no, it's stock standard. Is Coke no sugar the same as the former Coke Zero? Oh, oh, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty shit. Isn't it? I mean, it's no Pepsi Max, but... You're a big Pepsi with, man, aren't you? I would what's drink what's just, three litres of Pepsi Max a day. Three litres of Pepsi Max a day? <laughs> On wow. easy. Wow. Easy. Wow. No water? No, not for me. <laughs> I've tried it a few times, but... It's pretty overrated. When is Mitch going to start his campaign for Albury Mayor? This is from Weekend Worry. We should say who asked. Yeah. Willow asked about the extra salt. I'd love to end up Albury Mayor. I have a big chance to. I mean, if only I could go and delete the first five to eight years of my social media accounts and <laughs> God knows what else. But if I had a fresh start, yeah, I'd like to end up unofficial Albury Mayor. Would you? Would you? Mate, I, 100%. I'll die in that town. I'd love it. How good. Yeah. James Hornbrook says... Go to KFC order. You know what? I was sitting in the uh, Lavington Square uh, food court the other day, and there's quite a few options here. And I thought, Is Lavington Square in Albury? <laughs> yeah, it's an absolute pit. It's near my house. Um, <laughs> and I also tweeted this once, which I thought about when I was there. I reckon if everyone from Twitter met up, it would be like what you see in a in a shopping mall food court during the day mm. it's an absolute cesspool of people just shouldn't be there and people that are there all the time and that it's a real mix but i was sitting there and i'm like if you could have one takeaway order like where would you get the chips from where would you get the burger from and Picking what would be from everyone mm. it's a great question and mind you i was Completely on my own, just thinking about this, which no, is not. really sickening. We've all thought about it. And I reckon, and and you know, it's it's it is controversial. I reckon Hungry Jacks have the best burgers of all time. Wow! Yeah. And the char, char two wha two Whopper big. Juniors are better than a Whopper. 
I don't know why. I don't know what yeah. they do, but they do it, and it just there's no com- competing. No but but you get two Whopper Juniors and stack them up, and it is oh. double the flavour of one Whopper. I'd go Hungry Jack's Burger. I'd go Pepsi Max, and I was torn between chips. Mac is fries easy. Oh, no, are you high? Just quickly, are you sweet with the potato scallop that they're bringing out? I don't care. Okay. I'm, I don't care what you call it. It's scallop, no, potato no, no, I'm cake. Not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I don't care about that either. Are you sweet with McDonald's attempting... He's not going to touch it, I think. No, not interested. So you don't, you're not a Macca's man? Stay, stay in your lane. Yeah, I'm not interested. Think. Nah, Macca's is... Uh, so you don't do Macca's at all? Don't do Macca's. Okay. Oh, I'm I should say that. <laughs> <laughs> I do often, about 8 o'clock, have a, a big hankering for a... Uh, so I'm a big Mac McFlurry is. man. Oh yeah, at eight AM or eight PM. I feel like you've like you've all the people that thought you loved KFC, they're all a bit disappointed right now. Hear that? Yeah. Can we like let them down gently? No, or? like I, I, it's my go-to, but I think that you've got to always keep other options in play. Okay. And and you know what? If you go to the mill, like a good trainer. Yeah, you go. You can't just. <laughs> I go thought of the twelve hundred meter horse. It might be just back to a sprinter. Yeah, put, the shades, we'll put the shades. Put the shades on. And bring on it back and bring a bit. That's such a standard. You have, you have tweeted about the There's McDonald's. nothing better than when one goes absolutely terrible, and you're just walking back and go, "I've got nothing to say here." And you go, "I think we'll just freshen it up, bring it back in trip, put the shades on." <laughs> that if a trainer ever says that, they're just Boy. like, "I have no idea why this has gone so terrible." And I'm, I'm scrambling here. I'm scrambling. You have tweeted about McDonald's. Calling the local McDonald's to check the soft serve machine is working before making the three minute drive for a McFlurry. I have rung them <laughs> multiple times before driving there. And it's just... Do they know you now? I wouldn't say they know me, but they've stopped answering. But it's, it pays to check. I reckon it should be a part of their app. Like, if you can order online, mm. then if your soft serve machine is down, they should have to register that so Agreed. you can just go on and have a yeah. look. It's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. A registry for soft serves. <laughs> well, there's a registry for a lot of other things, so yeah. soft, soft serves should be well up there. I agree. Well Gareth said. says, is he pro baby corn in his Chinese or against? Oh, I love, I'm a big baby corn man. I mean, but yeah. is baby corn the only, like, is Chinese the only meal you see baby corn in? I don't think I've seen it anywhere else. I'll tell you what is yeah. the only Chinese meal you see, water chestnuts. And Ooh. I tell you what, there is not a night in Aubrey that my pantry doesn't have a couple of cans of water chestnuts really? in there. Yeah. Underrated vegetable, <laughs> but as far as bok choy goes, the most filth. Abs, all it does is suck up the flavour yeah. and just turn it into absolute <laughs> piss. Yeah. It is a terrible vegetable. I don't know what the Asian community see in it. I see no value. I know it's cheap, but it's an absolute stocking filler. Yeah, it is. And it is. I'm not, it a uh, it's dish. putrid. Yeah. No. <laughs> Did you see the question from Alan Hatsaken? No, I didn't. Oh. Okay, here we go. You, question you, for Mitch. Are our felt volitional states reducible oh, to something that peanut. Yeah, outside <laughs> consciousness or is neurophysiology how our felt volitional states present themselves to observation from an outside perspective, thus confirming the existence of free will. You know, I nearly <laughs> tweeted back to that and just put no. But then I thought, you know what? Someone's gone to that amount of effort to type that out and tweet it. So I, did, well, well, I didn't that's, reply. Have you well, that? Well done, that yeah. Yeah. But I think well, he's well, like, he's just gone obscure question in Google. Yeah, and dot com. Come yeah, yeah. yeah. question dot yeah. com. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently you said Samaya worked like Winks one day at an owner's update from Ron Burns and <laughs> the, the horse ended up finished without a win and turned into a show jumper. You um, regret that? Mate, sorry, I got this horse, bought this stride horse by Pride of Dubai, who for what we paid for it, you could probably buy Pride of Dubai for the same price. <laughs> and it was, it ran in like a Mooney Valley two-year-old race and started nearly favourite. Anyway, got to Albury and it was just an absolute psychopath. Galloped it up a few times. I'm like, oh, Beery, you genius. Like, you're going to get a <laughs> fortune out of this. Put it in a set of barriers and it just went tropo <laughs> and we gave it a couple of starts we tried everything and it just just it, it, um, it could run time like nothing else mm. and yeah it had four starts and yeah we rehomed it and now it's like going so well as a show jumper and the girl rings me up all the time she's like oh, this horse is going great and i'm just like oh. <laughs> Sound like you with this dating story. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Nah, but then that's the game. You know, you can find horses with heaps of ability and this and that, but if they don't want to do it, 
They ain't, they're not going to do it. Yeah, interesting. Any more, Rich? Uh, there's one. I like this one. Josh says, when does he plan on getting a spray tan? Any idea what that possibly means? Oh, that's... You're not too bad. Yeah, no, that's pretty average, I thought. Yeah. And then, <laughs> well, I need to work on my filters. Crowform, who's a good friend of the den, says, best rural Chinese restaurant, which I wouldn't mind knowing. It can't be an all There's one up here, isn't there? Have you been to one up here? I've heard a few whispers. Or you got told there was one up here? Or So, I, 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 as we've probably touched on, very, uh, I don't have much luck on the DMs. Like, it's normally just some... Um, Russian sex bot, you know, like, hello, <laughs> no, I want to meet you. you know. oh, they're sex bots, are they? Um, <laughs> <laughs> only when you give them their credit card. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she flies over in January. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, got a, got a DM and <clears throat> it was Lee Friedman. He's like, beery. He just opened it up with beery. I don't really know this man. I mean, I idolise him. He's a legend him, of the but game. But I don't really know. The, like, uh, it's like Beery. You're ever Heard you're man. coming up to the Magic Millions. Got the best Chinese of all time next to a bolo. Hard to find. I'll take you there. How good. When are you up? Uh, and I'll just like you? screenshot that DM. I'm going to yeah. put it on my wall. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I think we're, I think we're going to go Sunday night. How good. Can yeah, you, and then uh, yeah. Once you've been, will you, will oh, you let I'll, everyone know or you just let us know? It depends how good. If it's good, I'm not letting yeah. anyone know. Oh, but nice. I'll, I'll, Inner Sanctum. Can you extend the invite? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Inner Sanctum. Can you Great. But extend the invite to us? Or? I, I want to go. <laughs> That's a no. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> touch on it. Through the keeper, yeah. But I, I want to go to country carnivals and I want to like take a couple of horses to the country carnivals, review like their two Chinese restaurants, mm. and then come home. And that would be my ideal next. That's the next that's 10 years for that's me. Success. Yeah. And, and just business go there, plan, basically. <laughs> run in the open, you know, the, the sprint, the, the open sprint and the cup, <laughs> rate their two Chinese restaurants. I went to Mount Gambia mm. and I, I put a Twitter poll up. There was two Chinese restaurants. I had a runner in Morfittville <laughs> and I drove from Aubrey to Mount, uh, uh, not Mount Gambia. Um, Murray Bridge. Murray Bridge, that's the one. Stayed there. There was two Chinese restaurants. Put a poll up took the top option, which was um, Choi's Happy Gathering, which <laughs> I thought might have been going down another path, but it was a Chinese <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> and uh, went there. It was absolutely horrendous. Um, and two months later, it shut down. And I feel that my scathing re yeah. review might have had something to do with it. So sorry, uh, sorry Cho Choi. But no joke. <laughs> like, I'm like, literally running into people like, next week and like, Oh, I've been there. You know, I've done this. I've done that. So it, it was, it was absolutely awesome. So uh, I think that's where I see myself mm, over the next. I like that. Every book next, in Australia will pay you to do that. Uh, yeah, over the next four or five years. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm, they all want the content. So. No, but I'm sure they, <laughs> yeah, will. they like, will. They'll they actually will. They'll do. There's just nothing Come better. There's nothing <laughs> yeah. better than your quintessential Juppie, Juppie Chinese sensor reviews. Yeah. This is, this is you, I heard you did a review with him yesterday. Did have you? you? Heard the drama? Have you heard the drama? Did you do a review with Drappy? Oh, I won't say it. No. Did they not film it? The audios. Oh no. But I've got a way out for him. Well, I'll tell you what. I reckon they need to subtitles. Subtitles, <laughs> but not what you're actually saying. Yeah. The, the only, only winner. winner went the... for 27 minutes, oh, and they don't have the audio. <laughs> the only <laughs> Sorry, winner. No, I shouldn't break uh... it. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> The is only it, winner out uh, of that is the Broad Beach Tavern because I said that it, that Palmer wouldn't win a highway. Right. <laughs> um, anything else? We, no, we wrap good. it up? Just start the warm up, so it's Very best good. that we stop. We'll turn the camera <laughs> off and we'll get stuck into the Chinese. Um, yeah. Hope everyone got something out of that. It was great yeah, fun. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Thank well, you, Mitch. Nah, Absolute legends. pleasure. Um, legend. We'll have some Chinese. Thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Mitch. Good work. Bye Cheers. Bye, thanks for joining us. See everyone. Thank you for watching. See you guys. Gamble responsibly, call 1-800-858-858.